We've already taken our photo through initial processing techniques. We then enhanced it with light sculpting before controlling the contrast and colors with layers. In this final part of the series, this is my favorite part of the process, which is the finishing techniques. We're gonna look at removing distracting elements with the generative tools. We'll look at some creative finishing and color grading, all that good stuff. Now, if you don't have Luminar Neo yet and you like the look of it based on what I've been showing in these videos, then I have a link in the description with a discount code that you're welcome to as well. Okay, let's get into this final piece of the puzzle. So things like this dead bush here, I don't feel that adds anything to the photographic integrity of this image. I just think that needs to go. So we can do that with the generative tools. That'll be nice and easy. But the generative tools, oh, they're not always the quickest. So if there's other things that are small worth getting rid of, then probably the best way to do that is just with the erase tool. So erase just allows us to paint over the object or thing that we don't want there anymore. So for example, that little red thing there, let's just hit erase. And Luminar does a pretty good job of small items just getting rid of them like that. So in this case, we've got water that's reflecting the blue of the sky, a little distracting. So again, I'll click erase and that's gone. Now it's much better to work in small areas, hit erase and let Luminar do its thing on that small area rather than trying to paint over multiple things and getting it to erase all of them at once. So it may seem pedantic, but I'm a big fan of getting rid of any distracting elements. So for example, there's this little bright twig over here on the left hand side of the frame. I would really like just to get rid of that because believe it or not, it does actually just catch your eye and distract it. So I'll just click erase and get rid of that. And I think there was one piece of grass or something over here as well, which was doing a similar thing, just catching your eye saying, look at me. And we just don't want that. So just out of curiosity, and so we can do a bit of a comparison, what I'm gonna do is just use the basic erase tool over this bush here, and just see what it does. Because if we don't have to go into the generative tools, then that's a good thing. You know, if we can do it quicker with this tool, then great. But I've got a sneaky feeling the result is not gonna be that good. And there you go, that's, um, you know, it's done its best job to get rid of it, but that's really not good at all. Let's come in and use a gen arrays. So with our photo selected, we just come over and we click on gen arrays, one of the generative tools. Now what this allows us to do is very similar to what we had before with the arrays tool. However, it's going to use AI in a much more intelligent way and give us a much better result. And I'm pretty confident in saying that because while I have made fun of the generative tools in a previous video, that was during their first release and they were giving us some very wacky results. But the developers have really cleaned up the results. So I expect this to do a pretty good job. So I'm just gonna click erase and the AI is going to go to work analyzing the scene and we should see those dead branches replaced with some water and where we've removed the branches from going over the mountain, we should see all of that intelligently regenerated. So let's have a look. Yeah, you know, that's that's done a really great job. If we toggle the before and the after, I'm really pleased with that. So I'm happy. Let's just save that. Now talking distractions, what about all of the intricacies of all of this dry brush, grass, sticks, all of that stuff? I don't know about you, but I find that just a little bit distracting. So let me show you a technique that we can use to minimize that. And what that's gonna be is utilizing the blur tool. We can either use the Gaussian blur or the tilt shift blur. I prefer to use the tilt shift blur and that is because the amount of the effect actually tapers off based on where we place the blur center, whereas the Gaussian blur that affects the whole photo uniformly. So I'm gonna grab the tilt shift lens and don't think that I'm just gonna plonk this over the top and go there, doesn't that look great? No, we're gonna be a little more refined than that. But what I want to do is have 100% of the blur at the bottom of the frame here and taper to zero where the chair starts. Obviously I do not want any of this effect up in the sky. So I'm just gonna get the brush in a raise mode and get rid of the softness for once because I just wanna get rid of this effect really quickly. And obviously I'm not gonna get rid of it very quickly if I have a strength of 32. Let's go to 100 and go again. Okay, we're gonna get rid of all of that blurring effect everywhere apart from in the foreground. 
Now the other place I want the blurring effect gone is over the path as well. So I could paint it away like that, or alternatively, what I could do is try the object select tool in subtract mode and just see if we can't pick that up, which we can. Oh, I really love that object select tool. Okay, now we see all of the path without any blurring, but still, this does not look particularly good at the moment. So what should we do? Well, let's reduce the overall effect, not by minimizing the amount of blur. I'm gonna keep the blur exactly as it is, but what I would like to do is create a blend between where it's blurry and what was underneath. So I'm just gonna to start to erase this effect, and now we're starting to see those grasses come back, but with much more softness. So we can go over that again and sort of have a minimized effect of that. Let's have a look. Before and after, you can see how that's just really softened that down. And by blurring one area, that actually gives us the perception of a relative sharpness increase in our other areas. So the mountain in the background is actually gonna look sharper when we blur the foreground a little bit. We could do the same with the trees as well. Um, so let me just show you for a point of difference the way we would do that with Gaussian blur rather than tilt shift. So I'm just gonna start grabbing the amount. We really don't need to go very far with this at all. They really let us go heavy handed with the amount slider to 100. So we can just tickle that in, I don't know, we'll go for eight, that's fine. And I'm just gonna go with the masking, with the brush, and this time I'm just gonna paint it in positively and I'm gonna bring my strength right down. Let's go for 15, see how that works for us. Now, I'm not gonna to put too much of that over the sky area. I'm just gonna to stick to the edge where the trees are. And if we did want to just soften that walkway at the beginning bit just a little bit, we can do that as well. So it's very subtle, but here's our before, here's our after. Let me just zoom in over this side and we can have a better look. Before and after, before and after. Like I say, very subtle. I'm gonna go a little more heavy handed not because I want it to be more heavy handed, but just so it's easier for you to see before and after, before and after. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other creative tools inside Luminar Neo to see what we can't do to enhance this. I'm gonna jump into the dramatic tool, and this is one I really like, not with the default settings as they are, although that does look pretty cool. What I think it does is it over accentuates local contrast with the default setting, so I'll normally be bringing that down often to zero, but sometimes just a little bit of local contrast. And it also desaturates our image as well. So usually I'll be grabbing that saturation slider and reintroducing the saturation, and then just toggling the brightness slider to see where I want that to sit. But the default of 30 is normally pretty good. Once you've got it set up the way you want, so before and after, that's when we come in and say, you know what, I don't want that amount set to 100, I like the look but I'm gonna bring that back down. And then it's a case of just moving the amount slider back and forth, eyeballing your photo as you do that until you find the place that you're happy with. So 29% before and after, before and after, awesome, I'm happy with that. Okay, what else? Well, of course, mystical. You guys who follow my work know that I love the mystical filter. Look at this, ah, oh, so soft and dreamy. You know, way too much with 100%, but surely, surely there's a space for a little bit of mystical. Absolutely there is. We can make it smoother or less smooth, but again, it's hard to see now I've dropped the amount back down to where I might want it. So go heavy handed, let's see 100% and then we can clearly see what a softer or harder application of this tool looks like. So now I can see that more clearly, I can clearly see that I want my smoothness to be increased. By the same token, we can easily see how this tool is affecting our shadows. Now, I don't wanna darken the shadows too much, so I might actually just bring this up in this instance. It's normally worth playing with the warmth slider just to see whether that's helping with your overall color grade. But in this case, I may just take the warmth down into the negative territory, which is just helping to bring back a little bit of that blue in the sky. Okay, before, and after, again, way, way, way too much. But look, let's just bring that back down and start easing it in until we get to a point where we're happy with it. Now, what if we felt like the shadows were just getting a little bit too dark in this photo? Well, the way that I would usually handle that is to jump into the develop section and actually work with curves. Because if we bring the bottom left-hand point up, 
we can actually brighten up those dark pixels. So what I like to do normally is just bring it up ever so slightly, and as that reduces the contrast, I then put another point on here to reintroduce contrast into my photo. So if I toggle the before and after, you can see that we still have a lovely contrast, but we've lifted those blacks up. But as I often do that, and I have shown you that technique in the past, let's not do it on this occasion. There's actually an easier way to kind of work with this, uh, you know, like Luminar Neo does. They put in easy ways to solve problems. So if we come into the matte tool here, and let's crank the amount slider all the way up, straight away you can see that's kind of creating a similar look to what we just had before and after. To be honest, it is washing out the white a little bit, and that's why I prefer to do it my way, because it gives you just a little bit more control with the curves. But in a pinch, this isn't a bad solution. It also has some added benefits of allowing you to pump color into those shadows as well. Yeah, we can do that with the curves too, but this is quite nice because it's more intuitive. Like so much of Luminar Neo, it's slider based, and so it's easy to just move things around, see where you came from, see where you've got to, and decide whether or not you like it. So I quite like the look, but 100% is way too much. So again, we can just tickle in a little bit of this. I don't know, let's go for something like 24 before and after. Now, if you're watching this, I'm sure you've already got Luminar Neo, but if you want to get hold of some new assets from Marketplace, anything like that, Skylum are currently running a Halloween special for Luminar. I'll put a link to it in the description below, along with an additional discount coupon code. So you're welcome to help yourself to that as well. All right, back to the edit. Just because I want to show you guys all the different tools, often I'll jump into the mood section and work with lookup tables. On this instance, let's do something different. We'll work with toning instead. So many different ways to achieve results in Luminar Neo, and that's one thing I really love about this program. So let's boost the saturation up here, and we can see that we're introducing red into the highlights. Below the saturation slider is the hue slider, which allows us to choose the color that we want to go into the highlights. So if we wanted to, we could pop some blue into the highlights, but I prefer to go for warmer highlights and cooler shadows. So let's find a nice orangey color for this one. Jump to the shadows. Again, I like to work with my saturation to 100 initially because it allows me to clearly see the color that I'm actually introducing. We can always bring that amount back down afterwards. Once you've got the colors set up the way you want them, it's easy to see what's going on, grab the balance slider, and you can say, you know, I want Luminar Neo to think more of these pixels are highlights and therefore put in more of that highlight color or take it the other direction and make Neo treat more of the pixels as if they are shadows. So I want to have more of a warm look to this. So I want to take it more to the right, toggle the before and after, before and after, and now drop that amount way down. Now this is one approach to color toning your work, but to be honest, I'm not a big fan of this because I don't like what it's doing in the sky. Yes, I could mask that out, but really for color grading, I like it to affect the photo as a whole. And in this instance, it's just changing the color of the sky away from that nice blue that we had originally. So take this as a demo of the toning tool, but in this case, I'm not gonna use it. So I'm just gonna reset the tool and hop out of it. If as a finishing touch, I just wanna fix up some of the contrast in the image, Oftentimes I will be jumping into the tried and true curve section because that really does give you ultimate control over the colors and tonal range in your image. However, for this one, we'll do it slightly differently. I wanna show you guys super contrast because this is a really, really powerful tool. I'm gonna to grab the highlights contrast slider and then that allows us to say whether we want the highlights to be brighter or darker. So by using this tool, we can really fine tune the final look of our photo. So currently, highlight contrast has been introduced, so the highlights aren't quite as bright as what they were. Now for the midtones, if I grab that slider and move it up, again, we can say whether we want those midtones to be darker or brighter. For this one, I'm just going to introduce a little bit of midtone contrast and I'm also gonna bring the highlight contrast slider way back as well. However, I do like the fact that it's reintroducing some blue into that previously very blown out area. So let's do that. 
And finally, the shadow contrast, which I don't really want to play around with too much because we already boosted that back up, but we have the option to darken that down or introduce a little bit more punch there if we want. Which, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of like that. So here's our before, a little washed out through the middle, and here's our after, before and after. And if you decide it's too much, which I think it is, rather than individually having to go in and play with each slider to reduce it, one quick method you can use is jump into the masking, grab a brush, and let's say we want half of this effect everywhere. Just set the strength to 50%, get rid of any softness on the brush, and we can quickly paint the effect in with 50% over the whole frame. And now we have the equivalent of what we just created in Super Contrast as if we dropped all of those sliders halfway for each one. But rather than having to go in and do that individually, we've just quickly done that with a mask. The photo editing finishing is my absolute favorite part of any photo edit, and there is no software out there that can compete with Luminar Neo, in my opinion, because it's so creatively intuitive, slider-based, I love it. So even when I'm working in Photoshop and Lightroom, love those programs, but I will still do my finishing inside of Luminar Neo. So if you wanna get hold of Luminar Neo and you don't have it yet, but I'm sure you do, but if you don't, there's a discount code and a link in the description below that you are welcome to. So let's see where we came from and where we got to with this edit. Here's our before, our unprocessed photo, and this is the result of four episodes of advanced editing techniques that have got us to this point. As I said initially, you do not need to throw all of these tools at your photo edit. I have put a lot into this photo edit, more so that I can show you these techniques than saying this photo needed to have every one of these things done to it. So just take away this knowledge, start applying it to your work, and hopefully your photo editing will improve as a result of it. Thanks so much for coming along on this journey, guys. If you have enjoyed this video editing series, please let me know by leaving me a thumbs up and a comment is always very much appreciated. If you enjoyed this series, you may appreciate the other series that I put together with some different techniques, also in Luminar Neo. And that playlist is right there. Check out that one. I'll see you over there. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.